So welcome back to the channel, my name is Chris and I'm a Gorilla in the Wrist. Today we're looking at this Sega Design Z Series Skeleton Watch, very kindly provided by the company itself. Um, people who know me probably know I've been slightly sceptical about Skeleton Watches in the past. Let's see if this one has changed my mind. Let's get into it. So, before we get into the watch, just wanted to very quickly mention the packaging, not something I normally do. Um, but this arrived, and I have to say, I'm not often impressed by packaging. Um, but this is, well, it, it's like a book. <laughs> it's the only way I can really describe it. Um, it belongs in a library, I suspect. Um, and take the out sleeve off, and again, some really interesting design work. Um, I, I kind of like this. Um, there's always a flip side, of course, which is that actually the more money you spend on packaging, the less you spend on the watch itself. But I think in this instance, it probably sets uh, a really ni nice tone for the design notes for this watch. So there we go. The strap has now been applied and we have a wearable watch. Um, so to start off, I guess, it's probably worth mentioning that this is the new Z series. Um, it retails for about 230 British pounds. Um, we'll stick the prices up. Um, what what you actually get is let's start with the dial itself so what you have is a brushed stainless steel case um, it has four slightly odd let's see if you can give them a good look at them four slightly odd what I call Mercedes Benz screws um, I'm not convinced they're screws I think they're for effect but they're quite pleasant I have to say um, but what it also has is um, grooves along either side um, when I opened the box and I first looked at them, I thought, oh, it's got ears. Because um, that kind of is a little bit of the look. Um, but having said that, and to be fair, I kind of rather like, and again, I'm going to try and see if you can see this on the camera. Um, down the right-hand one, you can see a pop of red, um, which is from the stem tube, which goes through to the case of the watch. Um, so I, I kind of like that, I have to say. The dial fascia itself, because obviously it's not a... Um, dial face so to speak it is a fascia um, is a sandblasted um, lattice work I think is the best way I can describe it it has the Sega design logos at the 3 o'clock it has a minute track all the way around the outside um, with indicators every 5 minutes the hands are what I would call hollow fence post style um, with sort of little red chevrons at the ends and believe it or not a little pop of a loom chevron um, beyond that. Um, the second hand though is really nice, a really vivid pop of red that stretches all the way out to the minute track and really does look nice, I really like that. Um, it's one of those things that is very clear on the face. But clearly the star of the show is the um, skeletonized movement. This is a Seagull ST553JK um, and it is clearly the star of the watch. It's a 25 joule hacking and hand winding movement. It has a stated accuracy of minus 15 to plus 30 seconds per day. And all of that is covered with a really, really good curved sapphire crystal. Let um, me just see if we can get a sense of it um, so the crystal does follow the shape of the top of the case sorry the side of the case um, I can't imagine that's cheap um, if I'm honest um, the strap itself is a really nice comfortable red silicon um, it has what it refers to as sweat proof bumps uh, let's get a bit of the camera which I guess it does um, it is really comfortable to wear um, it's very heavily branded so the Seeger design um, name across the upper half um, but the furnishings are really nice they're really good quality um, brush steel with Sega designs on them um, and it works really well it's a very comfortable surprisingly comfortable watch to wear uh, one of those things that I guess will divide audience and views is the Sega design logo on the side um, I think for me I didn't think I would like it I've often whinged about the branding on the side of Invicta watches um, but this is done in a particular style that actually I quite like um, and I'm going to refer to it as 90s um, 90s modernist I don't know why um, but we'll get to it later in the reference and the reference on the thumbnail to 
the watches that are robots wear actually I think is referring to the Terminator 2 films and for some reason the style of this kind of reminds me of that don't ask me why I'm a complicated person um, on the other side we have the crown again it's it's a combination of brushed and polished um, stainless steel and um, we've got more of those slightly odd Mercedes screw things um, not entirely convinced what they do um, but again it carries through that theme from the other side of the case that sort of modernist 90s theme that I was talking about and the back has an exhibition case and again we get a really decent look at that movement So we're going to do a quick run through the specifications for this one. Um, so the dial width, I've got it down as 40, it's probably close to 41mm. The lug to lug is 48mm. It has a lug width of 22mm, which gives you quite a chunky strap. Um, the thickness is 13mm, again that's pretty good. Uh, this contains a Seagull ST2553JK movement, weighs in at 93 grams, has 30 meters of water resistance, and has a really nice, good quality, curved sapphire crystal um, across that rather fascinating dial. Okay, so let's talk about the things I don't like about this watch. And I'm going to start, I did mention it a little bit earlier, I'm going to start with the second strap that's included. Um, I, I, I have to say it's horrible. Um, I think what it does is it takes what is a really nice looking watch and makes it look like something that came out of a Christmas cracker. Um, the only saving grace for it is it has exactly the same um, furnishings on it and actually the furnishing is pretty good but that's that's about the only bit that is good about this strap back onto the red strap um sorry i had to do that the black one was making me feel queasy um the second thing i'm, I'm not wild about is the water resistance um so this is splash proof only um three atmospheres 30 meters um, which is a bit of a shame because i do tend to <laughs> i do tend to sling a watch on first thing in the morning and just have it on for the rest of the day um including jumping in the shower with it but clearly i can't do it with that which is a little bit of a shame because it would kill this one um i do entirely get that that's not what this watch is about and it shouldn't be a deal breaker um and in fact, fact for me it isn't a deal breaker but it is one of those things i mean clearly the um it's it, it's ears um, the water would pour through <laughs> where the tube is um so yeah it's not that but i entirely get that it's not a, it's not a utility watch that's not what it's made for it's all about the visuals and then the final thing i guess is you will have seen the loom shot 60 seconds ago um this watch is not about the loom um it, it, it's nice that they tried um i kind of think it might have been better if they hadn't bothered and then the final gripe from me um and it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, actually. But I, I do have a genuine concern about the visibility of the hands. Um, so the time is currently 3 o'clock. And depending how the light is hitting the watch will depend on whether you can tell it's 3 o'clock or not. Um, you can always see the red, hand, uh, the red second hand. It's very clear and very visible. And if the light's catching the hands in the right way, you can see them. So I would stress that it's very clear it's 3 o'clock there. I would suggest that at, at that point it's quite good, um, but at other points it kind of disappears a little bit. Um, so the visibility on the hands isn't great, um, but again I get entirely that actually that's the, this isn't necessarily about timepiece. This is about um, the visual impact of the watch, um, and again for me it's not a deal breaker. So let's talk about the positives for these watch, um, and I'll start with a simple one. Um, this is incredibly comfortable to wear. That the strap, the red one, not the black monster that they came along with it but the red one is really really comfortable um i have got a habit of wearing this on my right wrist which is a little unusual um 
but wearing it all day without any problems at all. Um, and the other thing that goes with that is not only is it comfortable, but I really expected for a 42mm watch, now I'm a gorilla, so big watches aren't necessarily a problem for me, but even at sort of 41 millimeters, um, and being as tall as it is, lug to lug, sort of around the 50 mark, 50 millimeter mark, um, it wears remarkable for the, the dimensions. Um, so not only is it comfortable, it doesn't look ginormous. Um, so I'm just going to sling it on wrist in a vague attempt to try and prove that. So bear with me a second. And there you have it. Um, as I say, it's comfortable. Um, the strap makes it so. Um, Uber Gorillas, be aware, with my eight and a half inch wrists, I am absolutely at the, <laughs> absolutely at the limit of what the um, strap can handle. Um, but it has decent retainers on it. Um, it just wear, it's a really comfortable watch to wear. Um, I think that's incredibly positive. The next thing I enjoy about this watch is the styling. Um, and I have to be honest, I don't know why it gives me this impression, but whenever I see this, I think of some form of 90s retro futuristic type look. And I am thinking specifically of the Terminator films, um, particularly the Terminator 2 film, um, or even even the tech noir. I can imagine people dancing around in the tech noir discotheque in the first film, um, and I can imagine one of them wearing this. The the look of it, the lines, the way the the um, metallic lines work with the logo and the branding, um, and the shape. Um, the shape makes me think of the Terminator. I'm not sure why that's a good thing, but I, it clearly is. It works well in my head. Um, and I just really like it, I really get it. Um, I, I think it has something very unusual um, and it, it just works for me, I really love the styling of it. Finally, I do love being able to see the movement. I particularly really enjoy, um, and I'd not seen this before, being able to see the main spring. So when I came down this morning, I'd allowed it to completely run down and the main spring <laughs> completely knackered um, and I've, I've never visually seen that before so I kind of really enjoyed that um, and also it kind of gives you a sense of how a mechanical watch works when you are winding up and you can see that um, spring tightening and coiling up um, it's just kind of fascinating um, okay I'm gonna have a go at summing this one up um, so in the introduction I mentioned my reticence about skeleton watches and my previous views about it and I have to say that despite the crap black strap um, which really belongs in a bin um, and the loom which I don't think is great and the lack of waterproof um, this one has grown on me I've been wearing this for two weeks um, and I've really enjoyed it so I think I've had my road to Damascus moment with this watch um, I think it probably has turned me around and I will think about skeleton watches a little bit more it's got a lot to go f going for it um, I think the value is reasonable um, and I point out have a look in the um, the narrative with this one because there's a sale going on between now and the 18th um, if you put a $30 deposit down you can get 30% off the watch in total um, and this watch retails as mentioned at 230 um, British pounds which means you're getting somewhere in the region of 72 pounds off which is pretty good actually um, it's a celebration of the company's seventh anniversary um, I think if you buy it on the 18th you don't even need to put the deposit down you get the 30% discount anyway um, there are other versions of this watch the titanium version um, there's different colour straps so it comes on a black and a blue strap as well um, I believe there's a, a black coated one as well um, and there's a gold coloured one so th there are various different ones um, I, as I say I think for the price the movement is really good it's comfortable and easy to wear um, and it's different this is just a bit different for what I normally certainly what I normally review um, so for me I wholeheartedly recommend it um, and if you can get in over the next week or so then there's a decent discount to be had on it as well so that's good news um, in financially tightened times always good to be able to get a discount so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, um, like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, 
we'll do all of that but tell me why you didn't enjoy it and i'll see if i can do something about that in future videos um in the meantime have a fantastic weekend everybody look forward to seeing you again back soon take care